M0 FXB, welcome back to my videos on the Micro PA50 Plus. Today we're going to change the firmware. We do have the latest firmware, but my SWR keeps tripping out and stopping the amp from working. Someone on the Facebook page has told me to use the 1.6 firmware that I've downloaded. I'll put a link in the description for that. I've also downloaded AVR Dudes version 2.14 because I have seen that that one works fine. Again, that will be in the description. This is what that program looks like and we'll be showing you later how to use it. The next thing is connecting your PA50 that you can see with the lid off. So there are screws at the front and the back at the top. It's just an Allen key, just undo the top two at the front and at the back and remove the lid. And now on the actual device, now you can see I've got my pins connected. There it is there. Unplug the fan because that does get in the way of connecting the pin so unplug that I know it's a bit glary here but unplug it now you can get to the pins now the pins are marked they are actually labeled you could copy my colors if you want the you are going to need to purchase this device okay and I'm going to show you the exact place to get that and it was only about five pound let's find that for you it does come with the cable and there's the part there. The one I've got is called a 2.0 to TTL UART 6 pin two CP2102 module and it has to be the 6 pin one. It's really important because you need the one that's called DTR. Then you've got RX, TX. We don't end up using the 5, vo five volt one, it's not needed, and but we've got the ground one. But you do need to connect the unit to the normal power supply, the PA50. Now, if you look at the unit where the cables are going in, we've unplugged it, exposed it, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six pins, okay? Now, there is a diagram. Now, take, make a note of this, the position of this white device here, this white connector, because it's going to tell you where to connect your cables. If I turn it around this way, then I'll show you a diagram. So, if you look here, we've got the, the white connector just there point out to you with a pen to the right of that you've got these pins yeah so the TX and the RX are the only ones that can you can get confused about so let's just say that the TX on mine is connected and it's green well that means on the actual connector here the TX will connect to the one that's marked RX they're backwards but otherwise the red one goes to five volt but at the other end in the end we actually disconnected that it, it just wasn't needed so that's really that one's not important the then you've got the DTR which is orange you can see there DTR is the third one down on the left you've got the ground which is on mine is brown but you're better off using a black cable you can see the brown is on the outside which is ground uh, then you've got the let's have a look now, TX, RX, 5 volt, and that's it. So it's basically, in the end, you connect, if I move that out of the way, you're actually connecting one, two, three, four cables, but you need to really study this carefully and get it correct, get the, right, get the unit the right way around. And then the, let's move on to the next part where we actually load the firmware. Okay, let's check our COM port. We'll go right click on the Windows squares. Device Manager, Silicon Labs CP210 is showing, COM15, we know it's COM15, We've, we're using AVR Judas version 2.14, uh, we select the COM and as soon as we did that and click detect, you'll see that the, the device clicks. We've connected the cables as I showed you in the video and you can see there it says Detective detected 1E and it's got a number there. We've got 80 mega 328P here. 115 board rate. Actually, we'll go right click device manager. Oh, wrong one, go to device manager. Like so. And we'll just double click the port and we'll right click it and we'll go to properties. And we'll just check that it's on 115 200 as well, which it wasn't, so just to make sure. Click OK, and now that it is, now we're going to download the hex file that I 
chose earlier in the video. So you just go three dots, double click that, and it puts the hex file here. So that all looks good. Everything looks fine. And now we can just hit program. And it starts to flash. And it says writing. The reason we're doing the 1.6 is because we're hoping that it, we can uh, get rid of that error that we get. And so that looks like that has worked. So what we're going to do, just going to reboot it. So I'll turn it off like so. Turn it back on once the power goes flat. Let's actually unplug the, the USB. Turn it back on and it does say version 1.16. Right, well that's it. Thanks for watching my videos on that. The next part will be to see if we can use 40 meters with this amplifier. Right, we put the housing back on. Let's do a test. So we've got our Zygo X6 100. We're just on one watt. To change the power, we just go to set and we turn the MFK to TX power press and we can now adjust the power just here. So I'm going to use PTT and we're going to put it into AM because it's only a quick test. So and the tuner, let's have a look, might as well turn the tuner on and then we'll give it a quick tune, see if it goes into alarm. One watt, M0 FXB. And you can see that it's not going into alarm. That's good. So let's just press that. It maybe it was going into alarm. I noticed that the mute is on, the alarm mute, but let's just do a transmission. And you can see it is working. There's, there's 20 watts there. One, two, test, test, test. So it's doing its thing. And the SWR is low on my rate on my device. Um, so let's go to another watt of power. So we're now two watts. M0 FXB test 35 coming out. I'm only doing. I'm not going to go higher than four. Yeah, that's the alarm has kicked in there. Let's just go back down one to two. And maybe we need to tune it. I feel like it's definitely working better. And then we, we're on 20 meters there. I'm going to transmit, watch it auto sense. It's still auto sensing. Look, 37 watts coming out there. And the SWR is 2.24, which is not amazing. But really, it's been a success. And we're on the beta version. If we turn it off, then on. Let's have a good look at the what it says when it boots up. Maybe there's a there's a firmware you prefer beta 1.6 and that was the recommendation that I got given on the Facebook page. Bye for now, 73. Please remember if this helps to like and subscribe. But this has made my micro PA50 now usable and it's I think it's a very good little amplifier, 50 watt or more, 73.